And we are live. What's up? It's your boy, Mike Wall, back with another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast, the place where we deconstruct the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agent so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. I'm caffeinated and ready to roll. Today, I got my man, Canadian mega agent, Kyle Meikle-John, and we're talking about how to build online funnels that will automate your lead generation and conversion Hey, keep in mind also, these episodes are always recorded and transcribed over at theagentfactory.com. Kyle, you ready to roll, brother? I'm ready to go, man. All right. All right. Let's 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 jump right in. Hey, before we start talking about um, building real estate funnels and automating your lead generation, um, talk a little bit about um, your evolution into the real estate industry. My evolution, how I got into the real estate industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what's your story? I mean, everybody's got a story on how yeah. they got into the business. Okay, let's. Uh, the, actually, the story starts from my dad. I grew up in the real estate industry. My dad has a, had a real estate brokerage himself uh, since 1980 out of a small town. So I I grew up uh, uh, in that uh, around that my whole life. Um, so, and my dad just retired about five years ago, I think, from that. So he had a long career with that. Yeah. Um, so for me, what happened with me is I got uh, into the oil patch, oil and gas industry. Okay. And I did that for about 18 years. Um, I just figured, I, but I always had interest in getting into real estate. But it just, I always felt I was too young or whatever. And and I had a good career in, in the oil and gas industry. Sure. Anyways, um, finally in 2007, I decided it was for me to get into real estate. And I took the course online while I was working out on the road in the in the oil patch and passed the course and I dove right in. Okay. That's interesting, man. So you, you don't know why, but you always had this inherent interest in getting into real estate. Yeah. Um, and and you, so it, it, I guess... You had some limiting beliefs early on that maybe you were too young, or, yeah. or you had um, yeah. or there was you know some inexperience involved. But then um, the day came to where you knew it was time to do that. Yeah. So so talk about talk about when you got your real estate license. What happened? So got my license, and it's funny because uh, you know I think we all get into it thinking it's going to be uh, a little bit easier <laughs> than it is. Oh yeah. And, and I grew up in it and I, I feel like I should have known better. But I, I, you know, so I went, of course, from again, a good career and just, okay, that's it. I'm going and doing this. Yeah. And 07, I think as soon as I kind of uh, sat down at the desk, it that you know, 07 bubble burst, right? We started oh, going yeah. into recession as well as. Gosh, I didn't even think about that, man. 07, yeah. yeah. That, that must have been terrifying. Yeah. So, you know, not at first, you know, I don't know, you know, it's just, I don't think I really understood, you know, I don't know. It's just, I guess I think at that point it was just, oh, it's slow. Okay. Well, whatever. Yeah. You know, let's uh, figure this out. It took me six months to sell my first house. I finally sold my first house on December 22nd. Uh, and then the next year, the next 12 months from that point, I did uh, 28 homes. Wow. Okay. So you just needed to get that first one under your yeah. belt. Yeah. And then you pop and then boom. Eight more. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you talk about, um, it's funny. I asked the question that must've been terrifying, but you know, a lot of times we don't realize that the bubble has burst until, you know, we look back on it maybe months, even sometimes years later. Well, yeah. And actually we're in that situation right now here, um, in Alberta, Okay. Yeah, uh, because we're huge oil and gas. It's all we're like Texas. You know, we're kind of comparable. Alberta is kind of like the uh, Texas of Canada. Sure. And um, we've actually been in a recession here for about five years now. So, wow. okay. and looking back, it's just like you said. We don't. We didn't. You know, at the beginning, we didn't really. I don't know. Just it. You know, we didn't realize we we're in it until it was. It really got bad, and it catches you off guard, right? Yeah. Really fast, right? Yeah. And. We're still in it five years and it, yeah, it's a struggle here anyway. So yeah, man. Wow. And, yeah. and so I'm curious, man, um, for, for those out there watching and listening, what finally clicked? Like, how did you, like when you sold that first house after six months and then you went on to sell 28 other, other homes, uh, immediately after that, what yeah. do you think it was that clicked there? Well, you know, I think, uh, number one, all of a sudden, it just seems like a lot that there a lot of realtors have the same story. I think uh, just all of a sudden, 
I, you know, I think just it, it, it's that six months it finally took to, to get build that build that relationships with people. And all of a sudden, a lot of my uh, my my sphere of influence start coming out of the woodwork, giving me uh, calling me. And that's all that was that that 28 homes I sold were just all people I used to work with yeah. over the years in the oil and gas industry. Um, so I don't know what it was. It was just, I think that it just, it all started rolling at all at once. Right. So, yeah, well, I, I guess on some level though, there had to, there had to be some sort of a connection made between you and those people so that they knew you were selling real estate now. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. that when they, when they thought of buying or selling a home, they thought, yeah, of yeah. yeah. And I, and I was experimenting a lot with marketing and, and stuff like that. So I think, uh, you know, it, that was, of the reasons too. Yeah. I, I yeah. think this will be a, a good segue actually into our discussion on lead generation and funnels because you know you talk about your first six months. Hi, Kara Settles, by the way. Um, I and she she said she says yes, I am five months. I feel like I am just now seeing this, <laughs> but yeah. I say that tongue in cheek. It's really that the failure rate in our industry is so high because people get in and like no one tells you, hey man, you want to have you might want to have like you know five or six months worth of yeah, uh, worth of operating accounts so that you know you can make this yeah. work uh, because sometimes it just doesn't happen overnight and and people yeah. aren't prepared for that and school certainly doesn't prepare you for that so no. we I think all, inherently we hope we get into a situation where somebody um, somebody if we don't already know somebody tells us that hey you need to start lead generating like immediately you're running a business you're like you know you're like any other um, fast food chain or grocery mm -hmm. store you got to have customers. And, and oftentimes people never have that discussion, but you know, I, I, I do videos sometimes talking about lead generation and the importance of that. And it's like, you know, if you're not lead generating, like you're, you're the deals you're doing today are a product of the lead generation you did 30 to 60 yeah. years ago. You know what I'm exactly. saying? And so, but you know, people, so if people are not lead generating every single day, then their business is at risk every single day, including, um, moving forward. Would mm -hmm. you agree? Yeah, you betcha, for sure. Right. And, you know, thinking back, I didn't have a clue what to do. <laughs> and I didn't have a clue what to do. Like at the time, the broker was no help with that. Helping, yeah. right? It's just, just go find people, right? You know, it's just like, I don't know, you know, so is it, 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 you know, it's, it, it was a huge uh, uh, learning curve for a few years anyways. Right. So, yeah. And, and you know, I, I think that's why I, I think I got lucky getting into the industry because like for me, I just thought um, I'm going to find out who's doing it at a really high level and I'm going to yeah. go work with them. I may have to give up a little bit of my commission, but I'm going to get the information I need to, to go from A to Z much quicker than if I just sat at a desk and tried to figure it out on my own. Yeah. Yeah. You betcha for sure. Right? So, so. I think in that regard, um, teams are, are a good thing. And, yeah. you know, I think the broker also has, I don't want to put it all in the broker, but I think the broker has um, some responsibility to, to their agents to, to, you know, perhaps provide some level of guidance or coaching. Yeah. And um, I feel like, especially in our area here that there's a real, I think there's a real lack of that for some reason. Mm -hmm. and I, I, you know, that's why I find myself oftentimes frustrated when I talk to some of these agents and I, I hope that we can get to them before they actually decide to get out. What you talked about your, your specific situation where you went into your brokerage and you didn't get a lot of help. What, what do you, what, what's, what's the climate like in your market when, um, when an agent goes into a brokerage, what should they expect? Well, you know, I think a lot of them are a little bit different now. They are working uh, a little more at providing uh, uh, training programs a little bit to a certain extent. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think compared to back then, um, for the most part, and, and again, some, I think, you know, you're, you get there and you're kind of on your own, right? So um, that's just my opinion, but I'm not exactly too sure. I just know a lot are working pretty hard at trying to get some kind of uh, direction and training on the go anyways. Right. So, well, you have, I mean, to do that, I mean, e to even be competitive anymore, don't you have to offer some level of guidance well, and, and training? Exactly. So that's kind of like, especially in a market like this, in our market that it's so tough, I find, uh, I think a lot of brokers are working a little bit harder at trying to add some value um, and, 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 and some training to the agents. Cause everybody's just, especially, Man, even in the the way the market is right now here, 
even though experienced agents that have done well are struggling, right? We're just yeah. it's to, to keep going. So even it's just really, yeah, it's just been a struggle that way. So everybody's working a little bit more at trying to find uh, uh, guidance, I think, right yeah. now. So is your market right now, would you consider your market a buyer's market or a seller's market? Oh, huge buyer's market. Okay. Huge. Huge okay. buyer's market. And so there, you, so you don't have buyers. <laughs> so there's not a lot of inventory, right? No, no. Well, there's a lot of inventory, uh, but just not a lot of buyers, right? Okay. So that's that's the problem we're here right now, right? So got it. So you got a lot of inventory, but you don't have the buyers in, in order to absorb the inventory that Correct. you have. Right? Yeah, you bet. Okay. Yeah. All right. So so it, and obviously what happens, and we know the 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 mathematical supply and demand formula, right? It, when there's an oversupply of listings, it tends to put a downward pressure on price. And yeah. so has that has that hurt property value where you're at? Oh yeah, uh, I think we're probably close to almost uh, uh, probably 18, around 18% that dropped over the last four years, house prices wow. in our area. So is it a good time to buy there, man? Oh yeah, very good buy. And you know, and we're, I think we're starting to turn the corner a little bit, maybe because we, a bunch of drilling rigs are starting to go out to work. A lot of drilling rigs have gone to the States to work. And a lot of people are, are working in the States from here, yeah. uh, just uh, traveling down to Texas or whatever. But honestly, I think we are turning around. So definitely a huge buyer's market right now. T a good time to buy a house. Yeah. Well, we may have to talk after the show, brother. I want to, uh, maybe we look at some multifamily there together. Yeah. Yeah. You betcha. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, um, so we talked about, at the beginning of the show and, and most folks who are tuned in um, in, in the in the obviously in the title, we talked about building online funnels. And yeah. and so for those who don't know, can you explain what a funnel is? A funnel is a sales process uh, to take a buyer, uh, uh, I guess, to a sale through to a sale, just like going to McDonald's and ordering at a drive through uh, yeah. sign. You go through the process, they upsell you. You know, introduce a product, try to upsell you to the next product, and then okay, next. Okay, yep. now you can pay, yep. right? I guess is the way caught me off guard with that one. So I think that is about Yeah, right? of course. And I and I and I think that, you know, in layman's it's it basically what you're doing is it's a nurture you're yeah. operating a nurture cycle where um essentially you're, you're you're taking a process. Well, like now it's like if you it, for instance, if you identify a prospect and you know you have a follow-up process and that process might include if it's a seller sending them a home evaluation yeah. um it might include a drip campaign it might include um, a handwritten thank you card it might include some sort of a seller's packet right it might include a phone call or a series of phone calls mm -hmm. this 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 funnel process essentially nurtures them online it's everywhere they're at it's in their email inbox it's on social media and it, it, it takes that funnel, right? And they enter in the top of the funnel and they go through the funnel and out the bottom end. Some people filter out the people who aren't interested, but typically the people that filter through are very interested. Would you say yeah. that's a good synopsis? Yeah. Very, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how did you, like, what prompted you to get into building funnels? Okay. So uh, I guess, you know, so one of my big things uh, for joining, uh, EXP, I guess, was something that I was really craving was community, uh, number one. And that's kind of, it, it's exactly what I, I wanted here at EXP. And another one of the big things that I wanted, I was looking for a, a website upgrade. And one of the, it, it just so happened, it was at the time that I was looking to come to EXP. Yeah. And one of the, one of the uh, driving forces too, another one of them of me coming over was uh, uh, getting KV Core for free, basically, right? Yeah. So that was huge for me. Um, just cause, uh, I, you know, I, I, I've always ran my business with online lead generation. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's kind of my main driver of my business. And, uh, it just started changing a little bit and I knew I needed an, an upgrade, uh, with newer technology. And, you know, it, so the KB core was kind of exactly what I was wanting. Um, so I dove right into that. Well, I fought with it for the first few months at, um, when I joined EXP, but once I, uh, I, I, jo I dove right into it and I wanted to get serious about learning how uh, to build good funnels for my business actually. And it just, yeah. I think, cause it's the hub, the whole hub of the business. Yeah. Right. And that's something 
I wanted to perfect. When things kind of went south five years ago with real estate, uh, I kind of wanted to I come back to rebuild. I wanted to have a, a strong foundation, and I believe uh, that was um, uh, a, a strong website. Yeah. So you must, are you, so you use click funnels obviously, right? Cause I actually went through your funnel like you instructed and uh, was, was, was just doing some, some research. Um, are, so you're a Russell Brunson guy. Yeah. So I, yeah, Russell Brunson. Uh, I, so I did take the one funnel away course in April and I did that. Uh, I got a, a funnel going for, for my, the agents that uh, joined my network. Yep. Uh, basically, yeah, yeah, to teach them KV Core. So, and so, what is the basic outline of a good funnel, Kyle? Basic outline of a good funnel: uh, a good, good sales page, a good, good call to action, good sales page, and and I guess good, a lot of good content. Of course, content's probably the number one thing. Okay, and, and so let's break that down a little bit, um, kind of piece by piece, to explain to the audience what that is. So, okay. um, so <clears throat> obviously, you have to have a message, right? And your your so your message is 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 something that's going to be able to connect with your specific audience, right? Yeah. And so, <clears throat> like for you, your your audience is real estate agents, right? Yeah. And so, what's your message to try to engage your the audience that you're looking for? Well, so that that's what I'm kind of so with that with my funnel uh, for my real estate agents. So I use my funnel for uh, for recruiting for um, and for my, my downline, so they can. Have the tools they need to do, uh, to to use to get KV Core going right away, right, yeah. or within a month, anyways, instead of trying to figure it out. So, um, so they, so what I found uh, is, um, uh, shit, I lost my train of thought there. Sorry. Oh, it was the the, the call to action. So I just kind of started running it here a couple uh, weeks ago. My call to action was the uh, the success I had with the text message sign writers. Okay. So with Baby Core, you know, you can you can have uh, uh, text 8724 to our smart number, right? So what happened with me a year ago, I sold uh, double ended a $1.2 million listing, all because of that sign writer, the text messaging back and forth between the system and a buyer they yeah. loved it. I got them into the house the next day, wrote an offer, sold it two days later. Right. So, so my call to action that I've, I've been testing is learn how I uh, made $37,000 in commission from one sale in 44 days Yeah, from KB Corp. And so basically you've got, you're, you're using AI, right? To engage prospects. Right. Yes. Yeah. And that AI is getting them to the point to where, um, they could they could actually hand them off to a live person. You could take the call or respond yeah. to the text. Yeah, schedule a showing or what have yeah. you, right? And yeah. and so the so the message I think you're saying is that you you're using this in all different aspects of your business. So the funnel is one thing. You're engaging agents online through your funnel. You're engaging buyers and seller prospects um, through some uh, well online and then through some text messaging sign writers that you're using. Yep. Um, which basically tell me how tell how does that work? So you have a text message writer, like it would be like a where the sold sign goes, right? Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is a coming soon one. So same thing, right? So just like that. Yeah. Uh, the one, the one that has the that I put on a listing that's an active listing. It just says see more on your on your phone. Yeah. Text thirty seventy one. Every house has its unique number. Yeah. Uh, you can do all this rating the back end of KB Core. So when when somebody texts message texts that out front on their phone, uh, it Im immediately sends them a feature sheet of the property uh, with all the photos, description, everything from the KB Core website. Yeah, and then we capture their phone number. So then within three minutes, uh, they get a text message that looks like it's texted just from me. <laughs> a ring from the system, right? Yeah, you're, you're you're sending that out. No, right. this okay. is all automated with KB Core. Okay. So with, yeah. So with three minutes, it's a text message and a ringless voicemail. Um, a lot of times people will call back because they missed my call yeah. or they'll they'll just answer or they won't answer. Right? Okay. And, and so when does when does the and I'm sure at, at, during this process, you're getting some sort of an alert either through your email or through oh, a yeah. text message. Yeah. At what point do you engage the prospect? Well, 
so I, I'll watch, uh, watch when they respond. So as soon as they respond, like I said, a lot of times they'll just call me and then, uh, then the conversation will get rolling or they'll respond. Uh, if, if they say, you know, Hey, we're just snooping. We're not interested, but I'll still continue on with, then I jump in, start texting them and I'll just work the script. Yep. So what I want the audience to see here though, is like with your coming soon, right? You're coming soon. So the, the, the teaser there is that this information is not online yet, but you could access the information um, by texting this number to this number, right? Yep. And, and, and if you do that, I'm going to send you all the information before anybody else can access yep. it, right? Yeah. And so so what, I, what I'm trying to get um, agents to understand here is that you've got – you've got to have something that the consumer it's a tr it's a reciprocal trade off like you yeah. give me your number i'll give you the information you want right right yeah and that, that's really important because if your message if your content is weak you're not going to give the consumer's not going to give you their information right that's right yeah yeah okay. so yeah it seems to work really good i get to, you know on 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 20 listings i typically i think i'll get uh about 30 40 leads a month actually off just off signs so okay and what's really cool about that too is you're increasing your odds of being able to 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 double dip the listing, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, I just think it's it's free marketing, really. You pay yeah. for twenty dollars for the sign rider and you have it for ten years or whatever, right? And like I said, I made thirty seven thousand dollars in commission just from from uh from that, right? Once that's so. awesome, man. That is all in in like the AI is like all over the place right now. We use we 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 have three teams. We have a team in Columbus, a team in Cincinnati, a team in Dayton. For our mm -hmm. Dayton and Cincinnati teams, we share a, a Commissions Inc. platform, but we are using KB Core um, in Columbus. What we're finding though is is from for the most part, the technologies are roughly the same, but there's a lot of AI from um, there's a, there's opportunities for AI using both platforms, and mm -hmm. actually. We've had we had an uh, a, a, an agent here um, a couple months back. Her name was Alice Compar. We actually had the our Commissions Inc. system um, nurture a lead through the AI through so through text messages up to the point where she went and showed the property. It was like a three hundred thousand uh, dollar mm -hmm. property. She went out. They loved it. She wrote an offer, and and it was like it was that easy. Like it, now that that's prop that's the exception and not the rule. Yeah. But yeah. what I want the, the audience to understand is that. If you're not doing this, you should be because your competition is. Yeah. And if you're not doing this, you're 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 eventually going to become irrelevant because the technology is going to surpass um, your marketing and and your. I can tell you right now, your competition's all over it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And it, you know, it's been a night and day uh, difference just from being able to get a hold of people and just you know the work involved to just before it was just call 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 right and. Right. Uh, now it's text message, ringless voicemails, and just working off the responses instead, and it just makes it a lot easier. Yep. So, so what we talked about, like building a funnel, your message, obviously, really important. Uh, well, first of all, you want to know who your audience is, right? Especially when you're doing stuff on social media, because uh, you want to attract the right people into your funnel. Yep. Uh, uh, if you're obviously, if you're using text messaging um, for your listings, that's you can't really control who's going to drive past. I mean, typically, people that drive past a listing, um, hopefully know it's within at least within a, 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 a couple hundred thousand dollars of their price range, right? Yeah. And yeah. They're not there. So, so the leads are, I, we love sign calls because, I mean, sign calls are great because these are consumers that are already out looking for houses and they're, you know, they're engaging to get additional information. So we know that they're like, much like the folks who come through an open house, they're a little bit warmer than, you know, calling somebody, you know, through circle dialing, right? Yeah. yeah. You betcha. Okay, so obviously the message you talked about, and this is one thing I want to to get very clear is like you talked about your unique unique selling proposition. Like what what is that? So for like t talk about the one you use for your agents, and then talk about because you touched on it a little bit about the thirty seven thousand, and then talk about the one that you actually use for um, recruits, or I mean I mean for buyers and sellers. Oh, if, for the, the KV Core one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You're, yeah. so uh, you're wondering where where I'm getting those leads, or well, no. So your, I mean, your unique selling proposition. So oh, you're, the yeah. message that actually goes out to because we're talking about two different groups here. We're yeah. talking about recruiting 
um, or our agent attraction being one and then buyers yeah. and sellers being another. Yeah. Most people that watch this are going to watch it because they want to understand how to attract more buyers and sellers. So why don't we start there? What okay. is the message and then how did you arrive at the message and how did you know that it would it would engage um, agents the way you wanted them to or buyers and sellers the way you wanted them to? Yeah. So I don't go after sellers at all. Uh, it just it, it seems difficult to to uh, generate a seller uh, a lead up here for some reason. Um, I've always gone after just buyers and I get lots of listings from that. Right. My biggest uh, and favorite ad from out of them all is distress sales. Yeah. So, it, you know, that's always that's always worked really well for me. And I find they're really strong buyers. Yeah. So that's one of the ads I run on Facebook is distress, distress sales, bank foreclosures in the two, 250 to 400 range. And that's that's the busy. That's our range. That's our good hot market. Right. So I've always kind of gone after buyers in that price range with a distress sale ad on Facebook. And then on Google, with Google pay-per-click, I use, I've had great success with EXP Zone making it rain, um, which has been another great one. And that's just a regular, you know, uh, search for hot homes in Red Deer, you right. know, kind of ad, right? Yeah. Um, and the third one that has been really good, I've been testing here over the fall, uh, is property boost with KV Core as well, right? It's just you know, actually, you just give them the MLS number and they just take it from there. I don't even, I haven't even seen the ad, but it brings twenty five uh, leads a month or in six days. Uh, twenty five leads in six days. Yeah, and it's it it's a property ad. That's all it is, an unbranded property ad. Do they the run that on social media, or do you know where they're running it at? Even yeah, on Facebook, right? Okay. It's just it's Facebook unbranded, I guess, kind of thing. Uh, uh, their account. And it, it, yeah, it, I tested it for, you know, I ran it for a month. There was problems with it when they first started the program. Yeah. Facebook was getting shut right down or shutting down their account. But anyways, for uh, a good test I had, I was getting, it was anywhere from 20 to 25 listings in six days. Um, and these are the good properties that are moving, right, for the buyers in our area. So um, that's been, it's been working really well, actually, the property boost, so. Yeah, um, Robin. Robin Mann asked property boost question mark property boost Robin is a it is a um, if, if you are a KV core client or um, you you can use KV core if you're not at exp they in fact they probably have um, thousands of clients who are not with exp but if you're using KV core KV core is like a boomtown or a, or a commissions Inc but they have a they have a product called property boost in which you send them the MLS number and then they blast it over social media. They run ads, blasting it over social media, um, and they drive traffic back to your website. So I hope that makes that's kind of the that's kind of the the, the short answer yeah. to, to what property yeah. boost is. And and, and those, those ones, I found those to be actually pretty strong leads, actually, to the property boost because it's almost like they're almost like the buyer driving around in the neighborhood looking at properties, right? Yeah. Yep. The, they're, they're pretty good leads, actually, pretty good buyers. So pretty strong ones. Yep. So um, that's awesome, Robin. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. So the question I have then is, is and I'm sure people are wondering this, and, and some people may even tune out because they think building a funnel is just way over their head. So talk about the simplicity of building a funnel, though, Kyle. Well, um, in KV Core, it's unbelievably easy, especially when you're doing. So there's 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 different kinds you could do. Uh, the landing page funnels. This five minutes, you got a landing page, which you know before you know you know how it was before it was a big process, right? Uh, now it's to, to build a funnel within. I don't know about the rest of the systems, but I you know I just know KV Core. But within there, they have it very simple to build a funnel, right? Yep. Um, where, where the more of the work is, is building up the campaigns, which those are funnels in themselves too, because you're funneling anybody that's not, uh, you know, engaging, you're always kind of send, sending them uh, other messages, uh, funnels, I guess, to, to, to funnel them back in again and, and uh, on and on. So um, it's fairly easy, just the campaigns are a little more time consuming, but um, it, it's pretty simplified nowadays anyway. So, okay. And what, what, what do you think is the, um, what would be the average cost to build like a funnel out? To build a funnel, a cost. Um, that's a good question. Uh, not much. 
I don't know, like under a hundred bucks. Oh yeah, for sure. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. I just, I, I think that, you know, anytime you start talking about um, online, you know, lead generation or, or fancy tools, right. People start, yeah. how much is it going to cost? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, I guess, blast. yeah. I see like same with KB core, it's nothing right to build a funnel. Uh, you know, I see with, um, I guess if, if you're getting into click funnels, right, then it's a little more, uh, yeah, hundred dollars a month for their software kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And, you know, um, so, but, okay. So you, you, when you started building out funnels, I mean, obviously you, you had a mission, right? You, 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 you've got, you start with the end in mind. It's like, how can I, how, how do I attract people into my funnel? And we've kind of talked about top of funnel, um, and, and kind of getting through the middle of the funnel. So mm -hmm. when somebody comes through the funnel, um, what type of lead is that? And, and what, I, what I mean by that, let me preface that by saying, when I say what type of lead is that, like you can call internet leads, you can call Zillow leads, you can call home evaluation leads, and there's a different quality level of each yeah. one of those leads. So when somebody comes through a funnel, what would you say the quality of that lead is? Well, uh, of course, you know, it's the you know two to three percent conversion. The ones that usually do come through are are usually pretty good leads, right? Google, I find they're really good leads. Uh, I, Property Boost, I find them very strong. Here's where I where here's what I'm working on to make them uh, stronger. As once they come in, a lead is a lead, I think, right? But of course, there's ones that are more motivated and they're ready to go now. Yeah. Uh, what I've really, really, and I've been wanting to do this for years. I think a lot of people do is, you know, once we get that lead, we don't really work them, you know, other than phone calls, maybe, you know, we don't really advertise them to them anymore. So that's what I really worked with uh, a lot with over the, over this fall yeah. to build uh, kind of like to keep that uh, lead engaged with uh, 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 videos of me uh on a regular basis uh, in different ways with market reports, with vendor uh, interviews and stuff like that. Kind of working on trying to make that that lead uh, engage for the whole process, I guess, yeah. and uh, become a little stronger, right? So, yeah. you know, I, I think what I notice is the ones that are strong and ready to buy, they're, you know, they, they come out pretty easy. Those are, of course, the good ones. And, uh, but there's only a small percentage of those that, and that's rare, right? Where a lot of them need that nurturing over time. And, and uh, so that's, I guess what I'm working on is, is trying to keep that, that nurture engaged and come out stronger on the other end. Right. So. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, I, whatever you're doing is working for you, brother. So, you know, you, you uh, obviously you, you, we're always looking to learn and to grow and to get better. Yeah. Um, but you know, if, if once you start, it's like, if you continue to try to, to, um, if you try to master it, if you read books on it, if you listen to podcasts on it, right. Yeah. If you're AB testing stuff, you know, you're going to get better. And I might, my, my, so my message to the audience would be, you know, if, if, if you try something at first and it doesn't work, it may not be that your everything is wrong. It may be that you just be, you tweak a couple things, your messaging, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the video content, the landing page, um, to get it right. You know, Kyle, I'm, I'm sure you would you invite the the uh, the listeners to go through your funnel? Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> yes. How would they do that? So uh, the click like the click funnels you're talking to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, while well, they can see the the, the, the top part of it. Um, Why they, don't we do this? We'll post the link sure. in, yeah. in, in, in at, below in the video or yep. the video link below. And then they can, if they're interested, they can go through your funnel and kind of see what that's like. Sure. Yeah, you betcha. And just just like to, to finish off on what you were just saying there about uh, learning and, and whatever with funnels, that's what I did. When the market kind of started going the other way here, uh, you know, my team kind of, a bunch of them, a few of them left and whatever, and it just kind of, I wanted to regroup and come back stronger, right? So yeah. I spent two years uh, uh, just reading, learning, growing, and 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 actually, that's one of the reasons it, I came to EXP as well. <laughs> in that growing period, right? And so, for guidance, this is the one book. If people are wanting to spend more time and, and learn about funnels and get their head wrapped around it, this was uh, the big one: Conversion Code by uh, Chris, Chris Smith. Smith. Yep, it's a great book, man. Yeah, total game changer, right? Just man, just. Yeah, I loved it, right? So that's kind of what I based my funnel, my click funnels, my KB Core 
membership site. That's all kind of based on what I learned from him, right? From yeah. that. Right? So well, that's yeah. all, awesome, brother, man. Well, listen, um, I appreciate you coming out, man, and uh, and jumping on and, and being um, open and, and able to share what you're doing. I know uh, you come from a place of abundance and not from a place of scarcity. And a lot of times, you know, people are, they feel like, you know, you're going to steal or, or take something from you and, and you are not that way at all, brother. How, how, I'm just curious if people want to get in touch with you to learn more about funnels or just more about your business or about EXP in general, how yeah. do people get in touch with you? Well, they can give me a call 403-872-9178, or they can, uh, uh, hit me up on Facebook, kylemickeljohn.com, or Kyle Micklejohn, I guess, on Facebook. Kyle with an I. All right, Kyle with an I, my man. Listen, it's been yeah. real. I always love sharing these stories week after week because I know this show is literally changing agents' financial lives, my own included. Do me a big favor. If you know someone that might enjoy the podcast, please share it with them. And if you like podcasts, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and smash that subscribe button. If you want to jump on a 30-minute call with me for a free business strategy session, go to meetmikewall.com. And that's it for this one, folks. Kyle, thank you so much, brother. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you got it. it. Talk soon. Okay. Have a good one.